it's, it's my pleasure to go on after such an amazing keynote. I really think the Asala work is, is absolutely fabulous, fabulous work. Um, so my name's Mike. I am a postdoctoral fellow at uh, the University of Texas at Dallas. So good morning from Dallas. Um, I work in Dr. Nicole Denisco's lab, and we study a, a very common disease in a, an underrepresented group of people um, that affects a urogenital niche, a microbial niche, that's relatively um, understudied. Um, so we study recurrent UTI in postmenopausal women. And what I really want to communicate today, if, if I don't get across anything else, is that recurrent UTI is a, is a global health problem. Um, the disease itself is designed or is defined as greater than or equal to two UTIs in six months or three UTIs in 12 months. Um, postmenopausal women are dramatically affected by this disease. Um, about 50% of UTIs in postmenopausal women develop into recurrent UTI, although the epidemiological uh, studies are not really quite, um, quite there yet for us to really understand the disease, but it seems like a, a great number of UTIs in postmenopausal women develop into recurrent UTI. Um, these cycles can last for years, and in some cases, some of the patients that we see decades. And um, we see a lot of antibiotic resistance in this group, a lot of, a lot of ARGs that, that are really important for clinical utility. Uh, because the first line treatment for these, this disease is, is chronic use of antibiotics. Um, so Rudy pathology is really not a one-sided conversation. We can think about things on the pathogen side. We can think about things on the host side. And my interest is really in studying the resident microbiota or the urobiome. And so I really ask the question whether or not the urobiome is a potential target for Rudy, whether or not we can find novel diagnostic tools, prognostic tools, or therapeutic tools in studying the urobiome. And um, another thing that I would really like to leave today um, having communicated is that postmenopausal representation is um, really needed, uh, not only in our field, but in many others. Age is probably the most important risk factor um, that's associated with the development of Ruti. Um, hormonal changes that occur during menopause affect the vaginal microbiome. So we see a reduction in protective bacteria like Lactobacillus crispatus. Um, and the vaginal microbiome and urobiome are now believed to be interconnected into one larger microbial niche termed the urogenital microbiome. The overlap, the extent of overlap between the two niches is not completely understood. Um, but we do know that there is an element of sharing between the two niches. Yet, postmenopausal women continue to be very underrepresented in this field. And it was our, our kind of goal to add representation um, to a demographic of people that, that really could use some representation in biomedical research. So we designed a human cross-sectional cohort to study recurrent UTI, to catch the, this kind of up and down of, of, of infection and, and, and remittance from infection. Our cohort has 75 postmenopausal women that fall into one of three categories, a healthy comparator with no UTI history in their lifetime, and two groups of women um, that have a history, a recent history of recurrent UTI, meaning they're, they're actively seeking therapeutic uh, intervention for their recurrent UTI, but they differ in the fact that one of them has no UTI at the time of urine donation, and the other one has an active infection during the time of urine donation. We collected midstream clean catch urine from this, this cohort, performed shotgun whole genome metagenomic sequencing uh, on DNA collected from urine. Um, this is a very well phenotyped data set, so we have extensive clinical metadata on this, this, um, this, this cohort. And we um, generated a, a bacterial and isolate, uh, um, bacterial and fungal isolate biobank with over a thousand speciated uh, representatives. Um, so our first major report from this study was just uh, recently published, and I want to kind of use this as a, um, this is the, the, the graphical abstract from the study. And we had two major conclusions from our first report and they're divided by this horizontal line. The first major conclusion is that this history of recurrent UTI seems to leave a scar on the underlying urobiome. We see increased uh, signatures of taxonomic and functional dysbiosis. Um, we see increased antimicrobial resistance genes, even in the absence of infection, when we compare it to women that have no UTI history. 
And in this group, we see even in postmenopausal women, increased lactobacillus species that are present in the urogenital microbiome and a significant decrease in the number of antimicrobial resistance genes that are present. The second story that we report is that we find that estrogen hormone therapy, which is a common treatment um, that postmenopausal women use for, for, for many uh, things associated with menopausal syndrome, um, is uh, strongly associated with lactobacillus in the urogenital microbiome. There's a significant decrease in diversity, an increase of lactobacillus presence in the urogenital microbiome. And in women that do not use estrogen hormone therapy, we find that the, 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 the diversity is very much and so increased and we see an increase in, in species belonging to the genus Streptococcus. So we performed a metagenomic survey um, of this that really wasn't hypothesis driven, but was really trying to generate uh, data that can make it, uh, allow us to make hypotheses. And we found three major conclusions. The first one I've mentioned that Rudy leaves a scar on the taxonomic profile of the urobiome, not only um, in, um, in, in this, the scar we, 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 we kind of we validated with both whole genome metagenomics and culturing, and we used a hybrid approach to validate that what we're observing is a, 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 an actual living microbiome, and it was valid. Um, the second story that we found is that estrogen hormone therapy strongly associated with the protective lactobacilli in the urobiome. And finally, that RUTI is associated with an altered functional potential of the urobiome and that there's an accumulation of antimicrobial resistance genes in the urobiomes of women that, um, that have a history of recurrent UTI. So I'm gonna to focus today's talk uh, on this section of our, our first report. Um, and really what we did is we linked our whole genome metagenomics with our um, clinical metadata. And we started screening the clinical metadata for associations with tax taxonomic associations and functional associations. And what we first found, the strongest signal, was that when lactobacillus was present in the urogenital microbiome, it was very common to see that that, that patient was taking estrogen hormone therapy. And we can look at the taxonomic profile and find that lactobacillus, which is denoted by this blue bar here, is almost exclusively associated with estrogen hormone therapy. We see a little bit in those women that do not take estrogen hormone therapy, but we see them um, really quite a lot in those women who do. We see that alpha diversity or, or the richness of the microbiome is, is, is really severely decreased among these women using estrogen hormone therapy. And we see that lactobacillus, I mean, if we just compare it and look at it statistically, it's, it's significantly enriched in those women using estrogen hormone therapy. So we performed a differential taxonomic enrichment analysis um, between those women not using estrogen hormone therapy, that was using estrogen hormone therapy. This is using a novel Bayesian model of differential abundance. And we found that two species of lactobacillus, namely lactobacillus vaginalis and crispatus, crispatus were strongly enriched in those women using estrogen hormone therapy. Um, and in those women not using estrogen hormone therapy, we saw atopobium vaginae significantly increase and two species are of streptococcus. But if we go back and we look again at this data where we see that lactobacillus abundance was significantly enriched in women using estrogen, uh, there's a, quite a bit of variance here. There's a big spread. And we wanted to look a little bit further into this, which um, was very interesting because what we found is that the modality of estrogen hormone therapy um, was strongly associated with lactobacillus abundance. And our, our, our sample size here is relatively small, so we do need to validate this. But we found that oral and patch modalities, transdermal patch modalities were significantly associated with lactobacillus abundance, um, while vaginal modalities were, were, very, were highly varied. Um, and we, we really don't know why at this point, but we have hypotheses. But there's at least two possibilities that might explain this. One is that EHT modalities differ by dosage or primary metabolism. Uh, and the second is that the patient compliance might be different between the modalities. Um, so we needed a way to measure excreted urinary estrogens, um, kind of to estimate systemic estrogen load because we don't have serum from this cohort, um, and, and also estimate therapy compliance. And a lot of estrogens are secreted into the urine. So I spent probably way too long developing um, a targeted LCMS uh, assay um, to, to measure urinary estrogens. And very briefly, we take urine and we do a little bit of solid phase extraction 
they take the polar fraction of that extraction and inject it onto a triple quadrupole mass spectrometer. And we monitor and optimize library of multiple reaction monitoring transitions for both um, analytical transitions and, and confirmatory transitions. And here's an example of just, this is estrone three sulfate, for example, in nanograms per mil in the assay response. And we see a very, I was really happy with this assay response because um, we have a lower limit of detection around a picogram per mil and a lower limit of quantitation around 10 picograms per mil. So I was quite satisfied that this is a, this is a relatively uh, sensitive assay. So now we can ask on a global scale, how does estrogen shape the taxonomic ecology of the eurobiome, at least in our cohort? So we can correlate all of our taxonomic profile with the abundance, and this is just the summed abundance of all estrogen conjugates. On the x-axis here is the Spearman correlation, on the y-axis is just an, an, an assessment of the statistical significance of any pairwise association. And what we find, um, particularly in the women with no UTI history, is that lactobacillus inners, lactobacillus crispatus, lactobacillus gasseri are strongly associated with um, the abundance of estrogen conjugates in the urine. We also see that two species of bifidobacterium, namely bifidobacterium breve and dentium, are, are also strongly associated. In fact, bifidobacterium breve is the most, uh, uh, the most strongly associated signal that we see. Uh, and interestingly, this was really consistent across every every permutation of the data that we looked at. Is that Anaerococcus privodi was was very negatively correlated, or was really the only negatively associated species with um, with um, estrogen conjugates. Um, so women with no UTI history exhibit significant taxonomic correlations with estrogen. Um, these include three species of lactobacillus and two species of bifidobacterium in their urinary microbiome. But what's interesting, this is, seems to be disease state specific. So in this analysis, we only looked at those non-infected urine, uh, urines and the women with a uh, history of recurrent UTI, but no active UTI at the time of infection, those women that are in between infections, you can kind of think of, um, exhibited a completely different signature in, this, in their association with estrogen. Um, and we also um, really didn't see a very strong signature. So we were wondering whether or not the, the, the disease state or the cyclic nature of the disease or how, how the disease is treated has affected the underlying urinary microbiome. So um, in summary, just for this story, we find that estrogen shapes the taxonomic ecology of the urobiome. Uh, we find an almost exclusive association between protective lactobacilli um, and EHT use in the urinary microbiome of postmenopausal women. Um, it seems that EHT modality matters. Oral and patch EHT were strongly associated with lactobacillus enrichment, but vaginal seems to exhibit a lot of variability. And we don't really understand the mechanism of that yet. Um, and that estrogen shapes the global taxonomic ecology of women uh, with no UTI history. Um, and it's more than just lactobacillus, it seems like. So this, I'm, I'm beginning to wonder whether or not estrogen really shapes the niche and makes it amelable for, for a host of, 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 of species. So our current work and our, our future directions, I'm integrating urinary metabolomics into this data set, the exact same data set, uh, the exact same cohort with both uh, large targeted assays and untargeted screens. I love mass spectrometry, if anyone follows me on Twitter. Um, and we're also using, um, we're also beginning model system development. In this field, we have very few model systems um, that we really understand. Um, when a really critical aspect of our model system development is to understand the translatability between in vitro studies, in vivo studies, and the relevance in humans within one kind of logical flow. We're also recruiting a longitudinal cohort at the moment so that we can understand the stability of the urinary microbiome over time. So with that, I'd like to acknowledge my lab, my collaborators, uh, our clinical collaborators at Southwestern, and just note that our awesome boss here, Dr. Nicole Denisco, is recruiting another postdoc. So you can reach out to us if you're interested. And I'd like to thank you very much for your time.